This is Tom Yum Soup. It's one of the top two most popular Thai foods on earth, at least according to internet searches. But order Tom Yum in Thailand and what you might be served could look more like this, or this, or any of these. And yet, they're all Tom Yum, which overseas might mean one thing, but here represents an entire category. One where chefs mix and match ingredients to fit their own palate and where the deeper you dive, the more you understand a totally unique flavor, technique, and of course, history. So today, to tell that story, we're traveling across Bangkok, visiting famous restaurants, waiting in endless lines, and drowning ourselves, almost literally, in the best and oldest versions of Tom Yam Soup. No matter what today we consider ethnic cuisine, it's probably an outcome of centuries of trade and migration. Like pizza, unequivocally Italian but actually derived from an ancient Persian flatbread with cheese. Filipino adobo is just a variation of a Portuguese stew, which is also the root of Indian vindaloo. And here on the channel, we've covered things like Ethiopian Doro Wat, heavily inspired by India, and even the classic American fried chicken, actually from West Africa and Scotland. That's just how the world works. War and conquest, trade and migration have pinballed techniques and ingredients back and forth until everything, if you look hard enough, well, it comes from somewhere else. Food is global, it's what ties us together and shows the course of human movement and interaction. Except, before all that movement started, before the establishment of early empires, before the Silk Road in the Age of Exploration, well, there were people, and there was food. And sometimes, researching a dish, you end up going so far back in time that you get all the way back to the beginning. True culinary dinosaurs made a certain way thousands of years ago, and still right there, where they started. Usually, these ancient dishes are hidden in old villages and deep in family recipes, but every once in a while, it's right out there in the open. And that brings us to Tom Yum Soup. Today, it's a worldwide Thai restaurant staple, a dish that's taken on a life of its own since it was first discovered by the tourists who came to Thailand after the Vietnam War. Even here in the country, it's often seen as a foreign Thai dish, something like pad Thai and fried spring rolls. But following the story of Tom Yum, well, we find something that opens up an entire forgotten category, one that in the very first days here defined local cuisine and showcased tastes and flavors that are truly endemic to this region. And to find that story, well, we begin on the street where tourists first encountered the dish, a place known in Bangkok as Tom Yum Alley, just steps away from Khao San Road. On a street in Bangkok's Old Town, right next to a market that long ago sold prawns straight from the river, a half dozen vendors make their versions of Tom Yum Gung, or Tom Yum with shrimp. These versions run the gamut of tastes and flavors, but they're all centered around these enormous prawns, and especially one secret component. It's head, it's shrimp head. It's the best part of the shrimp. This is something that I never think to order, tom yum soup. For whatever reason, I just consider this to be a foreigner Thai dish, even more so than pad Thai, to where it just never crosses my mind at a restaurant unless we have guests who are coming in from out of town. Uh, a couple. Unless we have guests from out of town, 
there's um, there's very few times that I would find myself ordering tom yum soup, but I don't really know why. I just kind of got it in my head a while ago that that was fine, you know. And as cynical as that introduction was, this is actually pretty good. Tom Yum Alley is about 300 meters away from Khao San Road, the center of Thailand's backpacking culture, and where a lot of foreign knowledge of Thai food actually comes from. Now, when Khao San first saw tourists, actually more recently than you might think in 1982, Thai food was still largely unknown on the world stage. And for the first visitors, before all the big restaurants would open and pad Thai vendors set up shop, well, to find something to eat they'd have to explore the neighborhood. And back then, this alley, specializing in tom yum gung, or tom yum with shrimp, well, it was the closest food street to Khao San. It's crazy to imagine coming here without any prior knowledge or context of what you might find, and encountering stuff that looked like this. At Mam Tom Yum, the recipe starts with prawns from the Chao Praia, so big you could throw them through a window. There's nam prik pao, or chili paste, and fresh red chili peppers. Then kaffir lime juice, fermented fish sauce, sugar, and a splash of milk. Real milk, not the coconut variety. For flavor and texture, there's lemongrass, galangal, young coconut shoots, cilantro, holy basil, and mushrooms, and all of it in a broth made from staggering quantities of what's called shrimp fat, or shrimp butter, but is actually the prawn's hepatopancreas, the digestive gland inside the head. If you're counting, that's 14 ingredients, not including the contents of the homemade chili paste. But right next door, at another old street cart on this same alley, well, the dish is something completely different. It's <laughs> น้ำใบเตยล้วนๆค่ะต้มยำของเรานะคะก็คือจะไม่ใส่อ่าไม่ได้ใส่นมไม่ได้ใส่พริกเผาเพราะว่าส่วนใหญ่ต้มยำทั
and that would mean taking whatever could be hunted, caught, or trapped and cooking it together with foraged plants. Now, we don't know exactly when the local people started making stuff like this here, but we do have a pretty good idea why. Because it's more or less the same story with the origin of almost everything everywhere. Without vitamins and supplements and access to grocery stores, it was necessary to maximize nutritional value, and that would mean using every part of an animal, including stuff that can taste a little bit challenging, like shrimp hepatopancreas. So the stuff that tasted good, lime leaves, lemongrass, things like that, well, they'd be added to the pot to mask the funky flavors. The metaphorical spoonful of sugar to help the medicine go down. Anyway, it is possible that given the prevalence of Chow Praia River shrimp, there might have been soups thousands of years ago that looked a lot like this. However, that would have been for special occasions, because in the days before refrigeration, meat would generally have to be preserved, dried or smoked to avoid quick spoilage. If you were lucky enough to have something fresh, you'd just grill it and eat. Soups with herbs were for the not-so-good stuff. So, to imagine what the earliest versions of tom yum might have looked like, we can picture something very simple. Native ingredients boiled in water along with dried meat or fish from the river. And as it happens, well, that is pretty much the exact recipe of a soup that happens to be considered the oldest surviving dish of the Chow Praia Basin. A soup very much like tom yum by the name of Tom Klung. So this was a lot harder to find than I expected it to be. Um, this is Tom Klong, which is, you know, Tom, Tom Klong, Tom Yum, you know, saying that one of them is older than the other one is really hard because both of these soups are older than the written record. You know, this is, as we were talking about earlier, you know, you talk about the list of the most famous Thai foods and you know, the things that were influenced by the Chinese or by Indians or, or Lao or Khmer or, or, or the Mon people or anything else, you know, over the course of all these years of history, and that really finding the stuff that's endemic to here, the, the actual uh, authentic central Thai food that, that was here before all the, uh, all the people arrived, you know, that's this. You can't tell the story of Tom Yum without tasting Tom Klong today considered a separate dish, but really it has its own murky origins. Its name, for example, today is often translated as Tom Klong or canal soup, but it's actually Tom Klong, which in context doesn't mean anything and is said to derive from an ancient word used to describe a soup like this. Anyway, Tom Klong today is classically made from tamarind, galangal, lemongrass, and shallot, in this case with a couple slices of tomato some sawtooth coriander and two chili peppers, and the main protein is dried and preserved fish from the river. It's probably, with just a few changes, the oldest surviving form of what would become today's tom yum soup. Spicy, there's like two little dried chili peppers in there. <laughs> it's so comforting. It's a lot of flavor. It was so simple, but again, you can see how over the years it's become a game of addition. Just keep adding stuff. You know, new ingredients with some more flavors, throw it in the soup, right? This is not a Thai Chinese, Thai Indian, Thai Arab, Thai Lao, Thai Burmese. This is nothing like that. This is something that the very first time anybody made this dish was here in central Thailand, and most likely within a few miles of, of where we are right now, to the best of our ability to guess. Uh, somewhere along the <coughs> Chow Phraya. Somewhere along the Chow Phraya, the taste of central Thailand uh, <laughs> in the old, old, old days. How are you still sp anyway. I don't know, I had something spicy. Now, Tom Klong isn't the only thing still surviving in Thailand that's representative of ancient, endemic, pre-imperial era Thai food. Slightly further to the north, there's a soup called Tom Som, made with chicken or fish, tamarind, bilimbi, fermented juice of the nipa palm, fish sauce, shrimp paste, and shallot. 
Hell, inland, we can even count jungle curry, which is literally the same idea, has the same ancient history, but uses non-river-based ingredients like fresh black pepper, Thai eggplant, finger root, and game meat. It's a fascinating story that opens up a lot of paths to follow. And we did have the idea of chasing that history, but then things went sideways. We'd called a car to our next destination, but all of a sudden, the sky started getting dark. And then the rain came. The driver that picked us up was kind enough to ignore all reasonable evidence of the coming monsoon and get us at any cost to where we were going. But in a tiny hatchback that could float in a puddle, we were no match for acts of God or nature. And within minutes, downtown Bangkok was impassable, and instead of searching for bowls of soup, we found ourselves in one. We found a path of higher ground in the direction of where we'd planned to finish our shoot much later, at Chulalongkorn University. But since the day was now completely out of our hands, we decided to turn ourselves over to the Tom Yum experience and just walk around to see what we might find. And it turns out, by just wandering in the rain, searching the back pages of a whole bunch of menus and asking cooks what tom yums they prepare, well, we found so much more than we could have possibly imagined. I've never seen this or had this before, and this is gonna be my first bite of crispy pork cooked in tom yum. Mm -hmm. Is it good or good? Because <laughs> I'm very tired and full. I mean, I can do a half-hearted one. It's very good. Yeah, I mean, it's like, of course it's gonna be delicious. You're combining a whole bunch of delicious stuff into a bowl. Um, oh, this is awesome. I. Personally, would eat this ahead of with shrimp, but that's just my own palate. Oh no, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Again, everything is better with mukro. It's good beer drinking food. Absolutely, and especially that it's like trains right now, so it's a good comfort. Food. Uh, yeah. Can, Can you? Shoot it? Yeah, I should on the it. camera. Yeah. It's well, it's, you know, Rain you gotta maintain like your elegance. It rings like cats and dogs. <laughs> ค่ะถ้าต้มยำของเทร้านรสชาตินั้นก็จะมีเปรี้ยวหวานแล้วมีความเผ็ดใช่มั้ยคะแต่แต่อันเนี้ยจะแตกต่างกันกับพวกอ่าซิกโคหมูแกงรันจวนนะคะเป็นแกงไทยโบราณของร้านค่ะซึ่งเป็นซิกเนเจอร์ค่ะอ่าตัวนี้จะเป็นเอ่อแกงโบราณตั
ถ้าเป็นถ้าเป็นต่างชาติมาถ้าแบบลูกค้าไม่ทานกะปิหรือชิมเพลทอะคะ่ะเราจะแนะนําเป็นต้มยำปลากระพงกระชายซึ่ง uh, you cannot eat spicy right I I I can the separate chili for you อันนี้ก็เลยจะแนะนําเป็นตัวนี้ค่ะใช่ alright so Sea bass and finger root. Finger root, one of my absolute favorite ingredients that we really don't use very much outside of this part of the world. Uh, so she says, if I don't want chilies, I can take them out. That makes me feel very personally, personally hurt and offended. Uh, but uh, all right, let's try this one. We have shallots, we have finger root, we have chili, we have fish. That's pretty much all I can actually see. Dari, do you want a little bit of this too? I'm fine for now. For now, yeah, you sure? Yeah, a little bit later. It's one of the best soups I've ever tried. Oh God! It is so good. All right, we're nowhere near done with tom yum, but let me quickly explain what we're actually finding. Now, by this point in our shoot, we'd tried six versions or relatives of tom yum, and not only were none of them much like the iconic overseas dish. Even out of these six, no two were alike. There were soups made with river prawns, dried fish, crispy pork belly, sea bass, and pork rib. They were spicy and mild, creamy and thin, really good, and well, that describes pretty much all of them. The truth is, the diversity in the tom yum category is by design. I mean, it's right there in the name. Tom meaning boiled and yum meaning mixed, or if you read it in context, tom yum literally translates to soup with various stuff. It seems more of a happy accident than a foregone conclusion that the soup known far and wide under the name tom yum happens to use many of the same herbs and aromatics as the probable oldest versions. As you do have to wonder, if Khao San Road hadn't existed and foreigners had arrived to a different part of Bangkok. Whether another style of tom yum might be the one now world famous. The first time the name tom yum appears in the Thai language recipe was in 1888, a version based around snakehead fish and seasoned with things like unripe mango and pickled garlic juice. Nine years later, we see the first tom yum gung, similar to the clear broth version on Tom Yum Alley, except without any citrus at all, and with the madan fruit for sourness. Before that, there are dozens of origin stories of whatever's called tom yum, with some historians claiming it started with a Thai sailor making it on his boat heading to China in the 1300s. Some saying it was made by merchants from India who brought their own versions of sour prawn soup, and others dating it to as recently as the reign of King Rama III in or around the 1830s. The truth is, all of these might be correct. Since new versions of tom yum are still appearing to the present day, I mean, again, it's in the name—a soup with stuff. There's nothing in history that demands that tom yum be a combination of spicy, sour, and savory. That's just the colloquial definition, paying tribute to that first incredible combination of the stuff that happens to appear naturally in the Southeast Asian riverlands. And maybe the most interesting part of the story. Is that if you order tom yum in Thailand today, well, the most popular local version by far is one that doesn't even take its roots here at all. It's a noodle soup brought to Thailand in the 19th century by Chinese and using almost nothing endemic to this region. It's not spicy or sour, and it's a tom yum in name only—a combination of chili, peanuts, garlic, cilantro, and sugar. Served with egg noodles and a slice of lime, and sometimes without soup at all. But by definition, both literally and in flavor profile, well, it still counts as tom yum. In the past, it was a technique. Tom yum was the big umbrella term for a technique. That technique of a whole bunch of stuff in a soup is not this, right? But now tom yum has almost taken on a second meaning, which is about the flavor profile, something that encompasses, you know, uh, aromatic, spicy, sour, sweet, and so you can have a tom yum flavor to something that is uh, originally coming from the Chinese k u i t i a o noodle dishes, 
Uh, tom yum noodles. You know, you can get it with soup. She recommended the soup on the side to have the dry tom yum with their seasoning mix, some peanuts, chili peppers, uh, crispy rendered pork fat. And honestly, in the pantheon of all the different tom yum dishes, we've had some amazing ones today, but this might be my favorite just for the simplicity of it. Mm. All right. Jasper? I don't do this often. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. This is the interesting thing about filming this today is you and I both are, and I don't want to offend anybody when I say this, not the biggest fans of Tom Yum. It's not uh -huh. something that we would choose off of a restaurant menu typically. Uh -huh. um, I was curious going into the shoot today whether I would see the error of my ways. Mm. I think when we shot in Pate Ya, yeah. and we had that bowl of Tom Yum soup that Gary Butler recommended to us, mm. that was sort of the first time for me that the light went off of being like, oh, this is actually good. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's not just something that's a foreign restaurant staple, it's it's good. Uh -huh. um, but the more you research what is Tom Yum, you start to see so much diversity in the category. What was your, what was your first overall impressions of today? I always knew that Tom Yum had a lot of variations, right? To me, it's kind of like Som Tam, you know? Everyone thinks about Som Tam Thai. I guess it's kind of like the parallel, that's like the parallel of Tom Yum Gung, right? But like there's obviously tom, uh, Som Tam Para and Som Tam Kora, all that stuff, right? And I think that's the same thing with uh, Tom Yum. But I think my revelation is that the, that recipe that came from Ban Dang, the one from Chulalong Khan, I didn't know Tom Yum kind of went all the way back then, back there. That's really, that was my interesting thought to, from you. You know, so you have something spicy, you have something sour, you have something sweet, which is generally sugar, but it doesn't have to be, uh -huh. right? Um, and then you have the, you know, the fatty component, which can be the shrimp head, it can be the, the crispy pork, you know, but whatever it is, that's the trick is not something revolutionary, it's just how well can you bring these into balance. And uh -huh. what we saw at these non-shrimp places was to me, every single one of them just nailed the balance, in my opinion. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. I think that um, nothing was like overwhelmingly in one flavor. Although, I guess if we had to give like one singular dominating like flavor, it would be sour. Would you say? I would agree with that. Yeah, Abs yeah absolutely. Yeah. But it, everything had like sweetness and saltiness. What's your take? Your biggest takeaway from today? What would that be? My biggest takeaway from today is that Tom Yum Go actually has like deeper like history than I thought. I mean, it's definitely not... Deeper history, deeper flavor too. Yeah, to me. yeah, like, yeah. I, I was expecting coconut sweet, the kind of stuff that you get overseas in Thai restaurants. Uh -huh. This was very shrimpy. Oh, what do you get overseas? What is it like? This is what the world knows as Tom Yum soup. It's made from a stock base, shrimp, vegetable, or chicken all acceptable, then onions, vegetables, prawns, and of course what Hot Thai Kitchen perfectly refers to as the trinity of tom yum, kaffir lime, lemongrass, and galangal. Then it can be optionally thickened with milk or coconut milk. Now no matter where you are, you've probably tried it before, and by now hopefully we've explained how this, or something like it, was introduced to foreigners. But there's one more part of the story, which is how it spread like wildfire and took over the world. As tourism boomed in the 1980s and 90s, so did Tom Yum with shrimp, growing from the streets of central Thailand and coastal fishing towns to other booming cities like Phuket and Chiang Mai. And so associated with Thailand did it become that the 1997 Asian stock market crash, which started here, was nicknamed the Tom Yum Gung Crisis. But the real explosion was yet to come. In 2002, Thailand launched the most ambitious program ever in culinary diplomacy. The government introduced a plan to promote Thai culture and tourism through restaurants. The program would be called Global Thai and it would be the first of its kind anywhere. Under Global Thai, the government would provide loans of up to $3 million to any small business owner who wanted to open a Thai restaurant abroad. And that wasn't all. Thailand would use its tourism budget to promote Thai cuisine. 
business plans and market research would be provided to entrepreneurs, and even Thai Airways would be required to carry local food products at a subsidized cost on every international flight. That way, whatever these new restaurants needed from Thailand, they could get. The program was a massive success. In 2002, there were around 3,000 Thai restaurants abroad. Today, that number is close to 20,000. Now, to really drive home the point, Global Thai required a few key dishes to be featured and standardized. That way, no matter where someone might be, if they had a craving for something promoted through the program, they could find it. And what the people wanted was Tom Yum Gung. According to internet search data, Tom Yum, as of 2022, was the second most popular Thai food in the world, behind only Pad Thai. It's been nominated for UNESCO heritage status, enjoyed by celebrities, and even lent its name to a 2005 martial arts movie. Diving into a bowl of this famous stuff became one of the very first missions for any first-time visitor to Thailand. And while local restaurants across the country were happy to accommodate the Tom Yum craze, one place at Bangkok's Chulalongkorn University stood out above the rest. It's a place called J.O. Chula, and it serves the most famous Tom Yum soup on earth. It might be hard to imagine at a restaurant that's won every possible award and where wait times average as much as three hours. But before the honors and accolades, before this location, and before Tom Yum soup, Mue Sai Chua, better known as J.O., almost quit the business altogether. She'd never intended to be a chef, but she married into a family that owned a shop selling duck congee, or rice porridge, and business was failing. In 1986, the shop went bankrupt and the family was facing ruin, but with six children to support, J.O. took a risk. She borrowed 600,000 baht, at the time about 20,000 US dollars, paid off the restaurant's debts, and renovated the building. She worked by herself every single day, and within a year had the loan repaid. Her risk would pay off into a thriving business. Now, the restaurant would close at 10 p.m., and as her kids grew older and started helping out, after hours it became their hangout spot to invite friends over and watch football on TV. Tired from long days of working in the restaurant, the kids would cook some instant noodles, and this became a tradition late nights and instant noodles at J.O., and especially ramen in mom's tom yum with a little bit of everything that happened to be on hand in the kitchen. Fast forward to 2015 and J.O., still at the time serving duck with kanji, expanded to a new location just down the street. With her children, now the third generation leading the business, well, they decided to take their late night snack and introduce it to the public. And the public fell in love. Until last year, the legendary J.O. Mama Noodles, honored by Michelin and coveted by everyone, were only sold from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. That's it. By 8 p.m. there would be a line, and by 8.30 the line would be so long it would be cut off. No more spots tonight. I've never eaten here. None of us have been here. Even with the new expanded hours, the line is just too long. But on this day, fate smiled on OTR. Prepared for a very late night of waiting in line, the biggest rainstorm of the year meant we'd only need to wait for like an hour and a half. All right, so 99% of the time, if it starts pouring down rain the way that it did tonight, it wrecks our shoot and it makes us really unhappy. But this 1%, it kept the line at J.O. Tula manageable. Uh, so thankfully, because of the storm, we were able to get in here without waiting for two hours. It was only one hour today, um, and it's for this. It's for the probably the world's most famous Tom Yum soup. Um, I don't think that's an exaggeration. We got two kinds of what is called the mama noodles, which is the famous instant noodles, raw egg, crispy pork, uh, 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 squid, shrimp, crab meat, lime, and all kinds of herbs and spices, and I am gonna give this a try. Um, yeah, all right. Daria is way ahead of me on this one. We're like, she is 
anybody who has knowledge of photography or social media is going to love this place because it is very photogenic, beautiful food, and let's see if the taste lives up to the line and the fame. Um, yeah, it's good. It's Tom Yum Soup. And I will say this, for a place that's this massively popular, people here have been friendly. They let Jasper, I don't even know what happened with Jasper. We lost him for like 45 minutes while we were waiting outside. I come back, I, th I thought they hired him as a line cook. He's back there like right in the middle of everybody else in the kitchen. This is not staged for the camera, by the way. Um, we've honestly never been here before. Uh, we tried to come here twice, saw the line, said, mm, yeah. It's good, but what it's really riding on for me is the mukrab, because that's something they're quite known for, and it looks good. Mm. Mm. It's really good mukrab. They say you haven't had tom yum until you've had it at J.O. Chula. And I have no idea if that's a statement I agree with, but I will say, after an entire day of slurping down every possible version, after tracking down the oldest stuff and trying some made for fighting COVID, after tasting the dish with pork knuckle, shrimp hepato pancreas, and even without soup at all, we have definitively had tom yum. And while I still have mixed emotions about the overseas version of Tom Yum Gung serving as a representative of Thai cuisine, in pretty much any form, not only is there nothing more authentic, but I guess it says something that the same combination of flavors used here thousands of years ago is still at the base of whatever you want to call Tom Yum. And somehow, it's outlasted almost every other dish on Earth. Subscribe to the channel for more from OTR. Please consider supporting us on Patreon. It's an absolute lifesaver and keeps us going. And thanks so much to those who do. Follow the links below for Instagram and social media.